Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. We're just waiting for a couple more people. So we're just going to let people in as they come. And we'll get started in a little bit. But as you see, Hannah's here. Well, she's there. And we're really excited for y'all to learn from her. But if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, don't hesitate to let us know, but we'll be right with y'all. Ooh, while you wait, we actually have a poll for y'all. Um, we were trying to figure out what everyone's artistic level is at, um, minus unprofessional because I can't draw at all, but we want to hear from you. So if in the meantime, you just want to tell us where you're at, that would be really helpful. We'll share the results at the end so everyone can see each other's um, levels. No judgment also. This is a judge-free zone. We are all artists. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Thank you for calling me an artist. <laughs> So yeah, she is right. We're all artists. We're all here to just have fun and be together as a community. So at the end of the day, regardless of your skill level, um, we're all learning and growing together. So. Hi, Jojo. Love your picture. <laughs> Oh, and it seems like we have a pretty good mix right now. We have half of the people, people are beginners, um, meaning stick figures only. And then half of the people are intermediate. So, okay. Okay. Look at y'all. Phoebe, I miss you. <laughs> um, perfect. So... I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, first, we're gonna do just some housekeeping items. So if we could go to the next slide. Okay, so Zoom tips. Um, at this point, we have all Zoomed, but we just wanted to remind y'all that everyone's gonna be muted. You can unmute yourself if you have questions for Hannah, but you can also put them in the chat if you would prefer that as well. Um, and she'll answer them either throughout the presentation or at the end, um, depending as, you know, her time permits. And then if we go to the next slide, uh, we recommend for y'all to be on speaker view, just so you can really focus on Hannah in the painting, um, instead of, you know, everyone else. But if you want to see everyone, then by all means, um, this is your choice. Um, if you do want to change it, however, it's located at the top right of the screen. So it'll either say gallery or speaker view. And if you change it to speaker, like I said, you'll get to focus on Hannah. And then if we go to the next one, here's a little bit more info about Hannah, uh, which some of y'all may already know. She graduated in 2018 with a BA in graphic design, and she is currently working at Sock Club where she's assigned clients for a bunch of really cool organizations and people. And she is a born and raised Austinite and loves to cook and paint and discuss the importance of romantic comedies, which always is favorite <laughs> fact. <laughs> always. So uh, without further ado, Hannah, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. This is totally weird. I feel like I haven't seen this many people in so long. Um, and thank you to the Alumni Association for trusting me with this process. I still feel like a baby adult. Um, I feel like I just graduated maybe two seconds ago. Um, but, you know, I have been graduated for two years, which it doesn't comprehend in my head, but that's the way it is. Um, yeah, so a couple things I want to note. Again, it is a judgment-free zone. If your painting turns out looking not great, that's okay. Um, there's certainly a million things that I've painted that haven't looked good. Um, and also if you have different colors or a different canvas, that also doesn't matter. I kept the painting pretty simple in order to have y'all sort of add your own flair if you want. Um, so feel free to just like totally disregard anything I say and make like, I don't know, a palm tree in the background or a bird in the sky kind of just, I'm not, I'm not here to like be very strict. I'm just here to 
maybe show you some things. So yeah, um, I guess we can get started, right, Gabby? Cool. So first things first, let's do a supplies check. Everyone has a canvas, right? Cool. <laughs> check. Everyone has the pinkish coralish paint. And if you don't, totally cool. It's fine. Um, and then the mustardy color. Once again, it's okay if you don't have any of these things. <laughs> and then sort of the bluish color, it can be any sort of blue or even the turquoise <laughs> color. We're going to mix things together here. So we're, we might get a little science experimenty. Some brown and then some black. And then I did ask y'all to get a bowl and you're probably wondering why. And there's a very good reason and it's to outline the sun part of the painting that we're about to do. So, oh, and you also need, I just set a paper plate. I'm just using a plate that I can wash to mix my paints on. Um, two paint brushes, one a thicker one, just cause it paints quicker. And then one for like a little bit more detail. And then some water to mix your paints in. So does anyone have questions regarding supplies? Great. <laughs> This is pretty straightforward. I think everyone's painted something before. Okay, first things first on your canvas. The sun is going to go about yay here. So you can set your canvas down. And then I usually put my bowl down. And we're going to mix the paint. Just like get your placing right, I guess. Then we are going to take our uh, corally right now. I have more of a beigey color, but it's whatever. Um, take this and then I would say put like maybe a quarter amount on your plate. Paintbrush. And let me know if I'm going too fast because I've done this painting about three times now. <laughs> first time so I understand if it takes you a bit and what I do and you might get the bowl dirty or if you want to just like freehand the sun that's okay too I usually go like halfway let me hold it up like half of the bowl at the top that's just kind of where I'm gonna like paint a little circle around so that the sun and you can you don't have to center it either but let me do that really fast and then show you guys. I'm gonna have to stand up for this moment. So the sun kind of looks like that. Hi, Miss Luxana. <laughs> and so now this is the easy part. What we're gonna do is we're just kind of going to draw two lines on either side. And then we're going to fill all this part out with paint. And we can take our time doing this, no rush. Everyone doing okay so far? I love your pool, Jordan. <laughs> and once again, you don't have to use a bowl. I just use it because I can be a perfectionist in like a good even curve, but sometimes a imperfect circle looks better. Just depends on who you are, really. Yeah, so, and like Hannah mentioned, um, this doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but we do look forward to seeing everyone's pictures after this. So while everyone's getting that situated, um, Hannah, how did you first learn about CNETs? I actually see that Jackie has a question really fast. Oh, yeah. I'll answer your question in two seconds. Yes, Jackie. So I have a square, clearly not. Oh, yes. Straight. Would you suggest going mid with the sun or put it up a little bit? I'd suggest putting it up just for uh, room for the hills. Oh, the hills it's are up to your discretion, but in my personal opinion, more towards the top. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely question so much. 
I'm sorry, Gabby, what did you say? What was the question? Oh, no worries. I was just asking how you first learned about CNETs while everyone's oh. still Philippine. <laughs> well, actually, uh, my mom told me about it. Um, and my whole life, I had wanted to go to UT because I was, I'm a born Austinite. I feel like I bleed burnt orange blood. And going to any other school, I kind of scoffed at because I was like, it's not UT. And um, I applied to UT and then I applied to St. Ed's just to appease my mom. And I ended up getting a scholarship and there was this really cool scholarship luncheon that I attended. And before I even heard back from UT, I was like, this is the school for me. I have to go here. It's just, I'm a very decisive person. And I just, something about like my gut told me I had to go. Um, and I really like the small class sizes because I kind of thrive on that sort of thing. Um, more personal based learning. So yeah, it all worked out. And I still got to go to UT events with my friends. So really I got the best of both worlds, which was kind of cool. And I got to see my parents and I'm an only child. So that was amazing because they're like my best friends. Okay, about done with this. Where, where is everyone at? Almost finished with that section. Still need a little more time. This is also an easy painting because you can go back in and um, like do a second coat pretty easy just to get some of this. My top <laughs> color is a little more peachy, a little less coral. Is that okay? Because that's what we got <laughs> mixed right now. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Once again, the color situation. If you don't even have peach, if you have orange, an orange sunset is always very nice. Okay, this is what I have so far. Top part. It looks a little funky right now, but we're basically going to do this in layers. Cool. So next step, the best part. I like doing the hills the most because curves are fun. That might make some of y'all nervous, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse my brush really fast. I am then going to take my uh, mustard yellow color and I'm gonna do also about a quarter size on the plate. I usually do about that much just because I don't want to waste too much paint, but it still seems like a mess. Also, sometimes tip, this is a Hannah thing. I don't think like a, a, a painter thing, but I'll just like <laughs> wave my canvas in the air to let it dry a little bit. <laughs> just in case, like sometimes the paints can kind of get smudged in between. That's okay if it does. Okay, so for the hill, what I usually do is I make the hill sort of dip down in here and then come up in the middle and then dip down in there just for some symmetry. You can do a totally squiggly hill. You can make mountains. Or if you just wanna follow me, that's cool too. So I'm just gonna make a line really fast and show you guys. And I usually make a pretty quick brush stroke just cause that's seems like the easiest thing to do. See, not perfect, but we're gonna clean it up. And then we're gonna take that down about mm, an inch and a half, about yay there. So then I'll just draw this line across and then paint all that inner bit. You can hold it up a little bit longer. Cool. Yay. Painting is like my form of therapy. I love it. Even if I paint, I don't know, a squiggle one day or a really ugly cat, <laughs> it's still art therapy. How's everyone doing? Thank you, Jackie. My, my one, my number one supporter. <laughs>
Y'all, and if you feel comfortable, feel free to just like show your painting so Hannah can see the progress and, you know, we can get that in-class um, person feel as much as possible. Yeah, I'd really love to see y'all's paintings. I promise, once again, I won't judge in any, any way, shape, or form. It probably might even look better than me, so. <laughs> oh, I love it. It looks so great. Yes, ma'am. Oh. oh, nice. I love that yellow you used. Uh, yeah. I have a question. We're painting in the hill, right? Yes. I'll show you. Okay. Cool. This bit. I just want the to yellow hill. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Miss you. You too. And I'm just going back in and making my yellows pretty uh, streaky. So I'm just going to go back in and sort of make it a bit more opaque. Hannah, yeah, would you mind showing the bottom line? Because that's exactly that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. OK, so it's pretty straight. Fabulous. Yeah. We're gonna, uh, with the next brown hill, we are going to sort of make curves over it. So it's okay if it's not perfectly straight because it's gonna be covered up anyways. Love it, thank you. Yeah. I just got paint on my face. <laughs> it wouldn't be a painting day with Hannah without paint on her face, so that's, that really tracks. Is everyone, is anyone behind right now? Because I can slow down. I still need to fill in the second Okay, part. you're fine. I'll wait. I'll keep adding um, more layers to this. Um, I'm kind of a bit behind. I haven't been able to fill in the area behind the sun and the hill. Okay, that's okay. Take your time. I didn't exactly Say what, cutie? <laughs> oh, I think she muted herself. You're fine. Um, but while people are catching up, uh, let's see. What was your favorite SEU involvement and why? Well, I was involved in a lot, so it's hard to choose. Um, I think, well, two are tied because they're two totally different experiences, but they shaped who I am, I feel like, as a person now. The first one was I was pretty involved in orientation. I was an orientation leader my junior year. And that's literally the four girls that I'm looking at right now <laughs> who are cheering. Um, I've met my best friends there and they're my lifelong friends. And we, I mean, we hang out all the time. We FaceTime at least twice a week. Um, yeah, I feel like through that, I found forever friends, which is so, so great um, and also, I never considered myself an extroverted person, but when I came to college, I realized that I was and I needed that. So like being an orientation leader to baby freshmen and them having their like wide sparkly eyes and thinking St. Ed's is like the coolest place ever, which it is, but like, you know, you kind of get <laughs> after quizzes and tests after a while, you're like, okay, I'm done with college. <laughs> but um, it was kind of fun just like showing them around and all the cool things and showing the the special locations on campus. I don't know, it was just really nice. Um, and my second involvement was, I was involved in the service break experience or spring break. Oh my God, I don't even remember the SBE. <laughs> I don't remember the acronym now. Why does that would kill me? Um, but I went to Denver and I also went to San Francisco. And then my last one was South Africa. And I mean, I think that experience showed me things that I never would have otherwise and it totally changed my perspective about the world and how we should all be servant leaders and and like really put our best foot forward like trying to help the planet and the people and so I don't know just something I think the combination of those two things like the orientation stuff made me a better I guess leader uh and more confident in myself because I used to be kind of shy and then the service break experience opened my eyes up and I think made me much more open-minded because I grew up in a pretty uh, 
close-minded community, shall I say. So it was nice to like go out in the world and see, see the way things were. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. I always love hearing people's SU stories. They're the best. I miss college a lot, actually. I was just telling my friends the other day, I was like, who, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss taking a test. <laughs> I miss taking a test so much and like the anxiety and like getting Joe's beforehand and being high on Joe's turbos during the test and then finding your friends after and like crying about it. <laughs> The college experience is so fun. And it feels like yesterday, like I said earlier, I miss it a lot. How is everyone doing with the hill, the first hill? Cool. We're doing good on time. Okay. I'm gonna go on to the next hill if no one has objections. Awesome, let me take a water, sip of water first. I was joking earlier that I was going to accidentally take a sip of my paint water and that has happened before. So if anyone sees me picking up my paint water, please yell at me because <laughs> that would be very unfortunate. I'm going to clean off the brush that we've been using, dry it off. And I'm going to pick up my brown paint. And I'm actually, if you have some paint left from your mustard yellow paint on your palette, I'm gonna mix it a little bit with that. So it's more of like a yellowy ochre situation. And I can tilt my color up once I mix it. And I, I just put like maybe a nickel sized amount in there. Just mixing that up. It doesn't look like a pleasant color right now. Maybe some melted chocolate ice cream. <laughs> okay, I'm trying not to spill. That's sort of what it looks like, like a, a darker yellow slash more towards the brown. And it's gonna dry darker, so if yours looks pretty light right now, that's okay too. And let me pause while people mix. And once again, if you don't have these colors, totally cool. So this is what I have so far. Usually for the brown hill, I kind of do the opposite of having like the yellow hump in the middle. I do two humps on the outside and like a more of a dip this way, just so there's a little bit of a contrast. And I think it's personally more visually appealing if there's like a little bit of variety in the hills. So I can do that right now. And then we're also gonna take this maybe an inch down to where I made that mark. And I can paint like this just so y'all can see what's going on. And it's also okay, my, my paints are kind of mixing but that's totally fine since these colors kind of go nicely together anyways. Everybody doing okay? Good. I like your sweater, Joanna. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do a second coat for this because you can see it's a little streaky, which is okay. Let me hold it back a little bit. OK, 
Katie, that looks perfect. You're doing good. <laughs> I'm just going to hold it up just so you guys have a reference. Lexi, how are the watercolors working out? They're okay. They they are a little um, hard to because they do need a little bit of time to dry. But you know we're here. We're, making <laughs> we're here. <laughs> it's all about the journey, not the destination. Yeah, there's it's it's stylist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add my second coat. Actually, let me fan. <laughs> Someone saw me from my window. They probably think I'm crazy. Just kidding. I'm on the second floor only. Miss Squirrel would see me. She was walking around with a pecan earlier. She was so cute. <laughs> If anyone wants to show their painting, feel free. I'd love to see it. Jackie, yes. Love it. Looks gorgeous. Phoebe, <laughs> you used an orange. Yes. I love it. Looks so good. Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be this dark, but. Jordan, oh, I love it. That's OK. No, it, it almost looks, honestly, I might like that better, TBH. I might have to redo my own <laughs> with the orange background. <laughs> I know, those all look so good. I will be honest, I'm using crayons because I didn't have to get the materials, but when I retake the class, I will be using the right medium. So mine does not look that way by any means. You can use yeah. anything. Um, speaking of just like style, yes, do you have any style influences for your art? Yeah, so I'm really, I mean, I love illustrative types of design um, and uh, I follow a couple on Instagram. I'm suddenly forgetting their names, which is silly. But anything, like if you, ooh, Rifle Paper Company, they have like those super pretty floral designs. They've now branched out into doing rugs. That's like, if I could work for Rifle Paper Company, that's my absolute dream. Um, I think their stuff is so beautiful. I'm also, I tend to gravitate towards a lot of girly type of designs just because I feel like that's my personal <laughs> aesthetic. Um, yeah, so rifle paper is like a huge one. And I also just like the classic OG Frida Kahlo is incredible. I got to visit her blue house in Mexico City and freshman year of college. Um, I got a internship with my professor, my graphic design professor, and we got to go there and study her work and stuff. And it was absolutely incredible. So yeah, that was definitely a big influence, especially her use of colors. Also, I thought of another tip. If y'all ever want to do your own painting, Pinterest is a really good place if you're a little confused about what the color palette should be. Sometimes you can just ones and that's sort of how I start my paintings. If I'm lost about what I think looks good together. Um, yeah. Okay, let me show you what I got so far. This is it. Everyone doing good? Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Am I not? Oh my God, I'm not muted. Apologies, <laughs> everyone. Oh, I'm gonna start singing. <laughs> I <laughs> I was expecting to hear Miss Callie, your cat, just talking away. She jumped on the table. We almost had a mishap, but <laughs> thankfully not. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'll mute myself. <laughs> everyone should clap for Jackie. She is a teacher <laughs> teaching during these uncertain times, and she's doing fabulous. And Jordan. <laughs> and Jordan, yes. I'm so sorry. Jordan and her pet snake. <laughs> oh my god, you have a pet snake? Anyone else who's a teacher in here also deserves literally all the props in the world. I don't know how you guys do it. Okay. 
if everyone's okay, I shall be moving on to the next step. Actually, I almost goofed. So we have the straight line on the bottom. I'm glad I looked at my reference painting. Um, we're gonna take the, the brown hill down a little bit because we're gonna make some mountains that are more jagged. Or you could go back in later and fill those bits in, but I like to kind of do it before. So I'm just gonna make like a little boop. Just like that. And it doesn't have to look pretty because we're going to cover up the edges anyways. And then this is the part where I'm going to fan. Because the next color will be blue and sometimes blue and brown aren't the greatest mix. <laughs> That's okay if it does, once again. Yes, this is almost an arm workout, painting and a workout. Yes, Jordan. <laughs> okay, so let's take, I'm gonna wipe off my brush that I just used. Actually, scratch that. I'm so sorry. We're gonna get the new brush if you have one, and that's okay if you're using your old one. The smaller one, since it'll make more of the mountains pointier, because next we're going to go to the mountains instead of the hills. I'm going to get it wet just in preparation. And then I'm going to take my turquoise color and do about a quarter amount as well. Things are about to get crazy. So Buckle in. <laughs> we are going to take our black paint and black goes a long way. So only put about a couple of dots and I can show you what it looks like before I mix it. I'm feeling three, three dots. So right now I have this. And it's, I don't want it to fall. Oh gosh, okay. And it, I'm gonna mix it in and show y'all again what it looks like. Kind of matches my plate, so sorry if that was hard to see. <laughs> Should have gotten a white plate. So you're basically gonna have almost like a, almost like a slate color, mm, a little bit lighter. And if it looks too gray, because mine looks pretty gray right now, I'm just going to add um, a little bit more turquoise paint. Just because I can show you guys what I'm talking about. It's, it's a little too gray for me. So I'm just going to add a touch of the turquoise back in. I'm putting maybe like a dime size amount. It's still pretty great, but I think we're gonna go with it. So, y'all are probably still mixing your paint, but I'm just gonna go ahead and outline the mountains so y'all can kinda sit with that for a second. So, for the mountains, once again, you can make however many peaks you want, but I am going to make maybe a big one here, and then a couple small ones, and then another big one there. Let me do that really fast so I can show you. And make them more pointy instead of like the curvy hills that we had. Okay. 
And it's okay if you go over your brown and your yellow. I'm actually kind of doing that right now. So I'll show you my crazy line <laughs> that I've made. It almost looks like a graph. And I can hold it up. Jackie, you're still mixing. That's okay. So my yeah. color is kind of because I had none of the right colors, obviously. So I am. <laughs> uh, it's kind of I don't, the lighting also is not great. So that's perfect. That? That's probably that's better than mine. <laughs> Thank you. But I okay. I can hold it up closer. Thank you. Good thing about triangles is you can just keep making it bigger if it doesn't turn out good. <laughs> Even if like, I think it'd be kind of interesting to have a mountain that's super big in the middle. Perfect, Katie, that looks good. Yes. And some of y'all probably still have the brown, so if you need to fill in these bits, I kind of, made sure that my brown went down, but I had to fix this part because it was showing, the white canvas was showing through. Um, I'm gonna actually bring this color down pretty far. So about two inches left on the bottom of the canvas. And then we're gonna paint all that in. Can hold it up too. <laughs> Does anyone have questions so far? Is everyone doing okay? Need me to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Okay, I'm gonna start filling this in. Just cause since sometimes uh, lighter colors, the way the paints are actually mixed, they're mixed with a, a lighter type of pigment that's not so opaque. Um, well, fun science fact. And they typically need a couple layers in order to really get their color to show through. Does anyone have any fun quarantine stories? Probably not because quarantine's not so fun. <laughs> trying to think if I have any. So I've been working from home, which has been interesting. I thought I would really like it at the start of it. I was like, yes, I get to be in my PJs all day. But over time it got pretty old and I miss my coworkers. But what has been exciting, <laughs> is like eating whenever you want, which is also not great for the quarantine 15. I feel like Jackie said that the other day. Someone did, one of my friends did, which I found funny. Like a freshman 15. Say what? COVID-19. Oh, co <laughs> That's what my students called it. I don't, they make everything up, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like they're in the know since they're high schoolers, they're, they're the cool youth. Okay, let me fix this really fast before I show y'all. Okay. This is what I've got so far. Let me pull back. 
it is a little streaky and like I said it's just because of lighter color paint sort of tends to do that so I'm gonna wave this around a bit oh, good though. <laughs> thanks that looks uh nothing like my crayon one. <laughs> oh my god it's gorgeous <laughs> Oh, I here, commend I the different for the rest mediums. of the class. Uh, I promise I will get actually paints soon. But for now, yeah. this is what's happening. Um, while we wait for people to continue filling it out, um, I realized I forgot to ask you at the beginning of the session, kind of like what you're doing now and what oh, you've yeah. been up to since you left the hilltop, <laughs> if that's not what Goodness. you're doing now. <laughs> Well, uh, I got a job last January working for Sock Club. I'm a graphic designer for them. And Sock Club is a company that makes custom socks. It's actually quite an interesting, fun job. Um, I am also lead designer for the subscription sock of the month. So you basically just get a sock in the mail every month and I, I get to choose sort of the design that happens. Um, but yeah, so the custom part that consist of my day-to-day -day life. It's super fun. Today, I just uh, closed an order with Chick-fil-A, who got uh, 14 different pairs of socks, which was a little crazy. <laughs> it was a crazy order. Um, yeah, it's really fun. I've made stuff for Billie Eilish. I've made stuff for Casey Musgraves. Um, I mean, any sort of HEB-related company I've done socks for. Yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, it pretty much takes up my life. Um, we do work very hard and, and COVID did hit our company pretty hard, which was unfortunate. About half of our staff got laid off, which was really sad, but we're still hanging in there somehow. People still want custom socks. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting, but yeah, it's a really exciting job. And um, it's definitely never what I thought I would do. I always thought I would go to, you know, like a more traditional design position, branding for companies and whatnot, but I'm making custom socks every day. And I make, I like to share this fact because it's kind of crazy. I make about on average 20 different sock designs a day at least. And especially now since it's busy season, I um, make anywhere between 20 and 40 now and so it's quite the I'm very tired <laughs> at the end of the day because I've used up all my creative juices to sort of like come up with as many designs as I can and make them look nice but yeah it's it's definitely very exciting all right what does that mean you made socks for Chick-fil-a yeah so basically um since like how did they use socks <laughs> You're good. So what we basically do is we knit our designs. I can actually, let me run and grab y'all up here so I can show you what I mean. BRB. I can let you guys do that. I forget that I have to explain designing socks to people because it's not intuitive whatsoever. So these are some example socks. These are for Topo Chico. So basically the designs are also, I don't know if you can tell over Zoom. Mm -hmm. The thread is what's like knit into the design. It's not printed on or anything. It's like the thread woven as the design and Topo Chico came in and said, we want custom socks for a promotional event. Say they did a big order for South by last year. Obviously they couldn't do it this year, which was sad, but um, yeah. So this is, they have little Topo Chico bottles on them. It's really fun. I also have some, I don't know if y'all have seen, but uh, Sock Club, the company I work for has done some of the St. Ed socks. Here's the milk bar. Oh, I love Milk Bar. Aren't they cute? It's like little layers of cake. My life revolves around socks, which is funny because I actually hate wearing socks, but I love designing them, so it really works out. 
And then for snooze, my favorite breakfast place, they put little pancakes on them. These it's really fun. Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The CNET's ones, those are Sock Club. They're so cool. I still love it. Yeah, so it's definitely a weird job, but I like talking about it because it's very niche. And I know more about socks than probably 99.9% .9 of the world. <laughs> Things that I never thought or would want to know. I'm just going to fill this out really quick. Is everyone doing good? Cool. I think everyone's still working on their paintings, but I think uh, Terry might be caught up up until where we're at now. Perfect. Yes. Thanks. Oh, and I see Lexi just showed hers. Oh, I missed it. Show me again. I haven't finished the top because I was late. That's okay. Gorgeous. Love the fluidity of the watercolor. Thank you. Okay, and Jackie's showing hers right now. <laughs> Jackie, oh, I love Jordan it. Oh, Jordan's her as well. Y'all, this looks Jordan, so good. Girl. I like that piggy one. That looks nice. Katie, love yours. I love your color combos a lot. anyone else is brave enough to show their painting would love to see it but also you don't have to and I have a question about brush strokes yeah like it seems like I can see a lot of my strokes is that okay <gasps> yeah that's can... fine it's just be... your paint okay should they be shorter or longer like should I try to even them out typically I just I just sort of trying to even it out if like you see paint I don't know if you can tell but like the paint kind of um, bobs up I tend to yeah. just like run my my uh what do you call this a paintbrush my gosh <laughs> my paintbrush over it to just sort of smooth it out but it looks like you're using thinner paints and in that in that um situation I would just do a second coat if you have time for that later but all good um, okay. yeah. and then we have Lisa's painting that also looks so cool <gasps> Oh my god, I love it. I love the pink sky. It's great. Okay. Everyone is sort of ready. What time is it? I think we have about 10 minutes left. Okay. Now is the fun part. And this is the sort of scary part because we're painting pretty much over everything. But it's all good because what cactuses are all unique. They're all special in their own way. The next step is I'm going to add maybe a dime size amount of black into that blue color that I mixed earlier to create sort of like a maybe let's go with a dark denim color, dark enough to contrast over those blue mountains that we just made. And if you need a uh, add more turquoise, go ahead, just because this will need a little bit more paint than the other portions because we're adding the cacti. And I can show you all my color in a second. I think I need to add more black. And I'll walk y'all step by step through making a cactus because they can be tricky sometimes. Okay. It almost looks like a dark gray. Let me show you. It might show up darker to y'all, but in, in my view, it's like a it's like a pretty dark blue jean, dark grayish color. Cool. First step we're going to do, this is the easiest part, is we're just going to fill out this bottom part that we haven't painted yet, which is basically the frontal ground. And I'm just going to make sort of another wavy line. You can make yours straight if you want. like that, and then just fill it in. There. 
That was also a good question Katie asked about brush strokes. I typically just sort of make long ones and then if there's ever that buildup that I was talking about, go back in and fix it. That's also valuable paint to use because I can kind of scrape that up with my paintbrush and then pick it up over here to use just so you're not wasting as much. And you can see what I mean about the darker colors having um, more opacity to the paint or they're not a see-through, at least with my paint, my experience. Um, because this looks like it might only need about one coat. Okay. That's it. We're almost done, you guys. We're so close. Next is the fun part. Might be the scary part too. How's everyone doing? Good. How's, how's yours looking, Terry? I'm curious. Oh, I love it. It looks great. Oh, that looks, looks really good. good. Oh gosh, paint all over my table. Oh, speaking of everyone sharing their designs, um, after this, we would love to see what everyone came up with and maybe show all of them to Hannah. So if you could take a picture of them and then send them to ICU alumni, you may see yourselves featured somewhere, but we, either way, we would love to see them and we would love for Hannah to have a picture of y'all's creations. Uh, you can send it as a you know selfie with your painting if you want, or just a painting by itself if you don't wanna be in the picture. But we would love to have a virtual gallery, I guess, is what it would be in this environment. Okay, I'm going to move on. But take your time, because this part, pretty straightforward. Even though it can be a little nerve wracking. So for the cacti, we're going to go basically over our painting. I usually make my first cactus mm, about five inches from the right and I'll just draw a line straight up and I usually end it at around the yellow hill and this is just my my guiding line right now and it's okay if it's not exactly perfect and then I'm gonna make this line thicker. I'm gonna maybe half an inch wide. So basically it just looks like you have a giant stick <laughs> in your painting. Perfect. Looks good, Katie. Next, let me know if I'm going too fast too. I'm going to draw the first arm of the cactus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out maybe one inch and then I'm going to make a right angle and then go that way. It's okay if you're behind, don't worry. Are your edges like circular or are they pointy? The what? Your um, 
points for like the cacti because I can't really see. Are they more like very straight? Oh, I see it. It's like half. Yeah, straight. it's more smooth right now. We'll add in yeah. the little spikies in a second. Okay. Sorry if I'm going over time too. And I'm actually going to make this one a little bit thicker. I'm going to go in and add my second arm, which is going to be a little bit above and a little bit smaller. About the same thickness. Jackie, you're doing great. I see your quizzical brow. Jordan, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, yes, girl. <gasps> Looks good. Anybody else want to show things? <gasps> yes, I love the crayon edition. And then in between these two arms right here, I'm going to do an arm on the other side, right in the middle of those two and do the same sort of thing, but I'm not gonna bring it up to the top of this one. We're gonna bring it about yay high. That's your first cactus, everybody. Oh, I love it. Maria, I love it, it looks great. I love those colors. Very Halloween. <laughs> Okay, next I'm gonna do a little tiny cactus right here. So just another straight line, sort of the same concept as the previous cactus. But this time I'm only gonna do two arms. I'm gonna do one right here. And then another one just a touch higher. Kind of messed up on that one, so we're gonna fix it. Katie, that's looking really good. I like it. Okay. And it's okay if y'all are still, even on the first cactus or not even on that. The next one, I, I like the rule of threes. I just like pairing everything in threes. So I'm gonna put three cactuses on here. I'm gonna do obviously the same concept, but I'm gonna do a size in between this cactus and this cactus, about right here. Mm, yeah, about that big. And I'm going to add three arms, but almost flip this cactus. So there's two arms on this side and one arm on this side, just so they don't look so identical. So we like the differences in people. We enjoy diversity. Gabby, I was inspired by your crayons. So I, I just crayon on top of my watercolors. Oh, I love I it. I love it. That looks great. <laughs> I just don't have any paints. I'm not a, a creative person. I'm definitely more on the stick figure, like I said. So paint is not, I, it, it's an investment. I will get craftier, hopefully, in the next couple of months. But 
I love the final product or I mean final ish because I know this is not the final product. Yeah. We are running out of time, you guys, but this is the fun part. You can go back in. Sometimes I like to make my edges wavy by kind of going back over the cactus and I've made sort of that like little wavy texture. I just, I can show you again how I do it with my paintbrush. I just kind of wiggle it. Or if you have another paintbrush that sort of has a flatter edge, you can make little spikes by dragging your paintbrush from the inside of the cactus up and out. So it makes this sort of situation like that. Sometimes I like to do a variety. So one cactus has the spikes, one cactus has little squiggles. Yay. And if you want to, you can even add like sometimes if I'm feeling crazy, might not look good, very good right now, but I'll add like a little agave plant in here by just making like little four leaf designs just for some more shrubbery in the desert. But if you want to keep it simple and stick to the cactuses, love it, love it. And I can hold this up for y'all to reference too. I would love to see you guys' paintings. <gasps> Phoebe, oh my God, I love it. Oh, I love the blue. I like that you switched the colors. Those look nice. Wait, I actually maybe like the orange background better. That looks really pretty. Eee, I'm so excited to see everyone. Yes, Gabby. <laughs> oh. I love it. I'm really excited to see everyone. So, and actually what we'll do at the end is if y'all feel comfortable and just want to turn your cameras on, we would love to get a virtual screenshot of everyone just like sharing their pictures while we get like the individual pictures um so we'll give you a head um heads up sorry that's what the headshot we'll give you a heads up <laughs> of when we're about to take the picture so if you don't feel comfortable by any means then you can turn off your camera but we would love to have as many people um showcase their talents as possible I love it. Maria, that looks super nice. I like the orange background too. Y'all in the orange, man. I think I like the orange better, almost. Who's to say? My mom wants me to paint a painting for her of this, so I might do it with an orange background. I'm so excited to see everyone's. Jackie, how are you doing? Doing good? Mary, Samantha, Starletta, Lisa, Angela, Rebecca. Oh, that looks really good. Oh, I love that. Terry, yeah. it looks nice. I like the yellow a lot. Mm hmm Oh, and it almost looked like Terry was setting like little rays of sunshine around the sun, if I saw that correctly. I know. Oh, I love cool. it. Your cactuses are perfect. Cacti? Is that a cacti? That's a word. Cac okay. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I'm not well versed in my desert language. <laughs> Just maybe in my painting. <laughs> also, y'all can go back in and paint the edges. I forgot to add that part. Or you could put it in frame. <gasps> Starletta. Oh, I love it. It looks so nice. Ooh. Oh, I love I like the pink that you did. Yeah. That looks so nice. I love it. Oh, I like your little cactus. Cute. 
I love it. Jordan, would you like to share yours? Sorry to call you out. <laughs> I just like yours. Yes, girl, that looks so good. Oh, that love. pink looks really, I love all the pinks. Mm -hmm. The variety in them, they look awesome. I like everyone's variety. It's so nice. Yes, wave it around. Thank you guys so much for coming. This has made my entire month, year. No, thank you so much for, you know, sharing your time and talent with us. Of course. Um, while we wait for everyone to just finish painting in their, um, well, finishing up their little masterpieces, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, I think, um, I am so lost with Hannah's beautiful painting. Uh, we are here with the Alumni Association. Um, and so if you ever wanna learn more about how to connect with fellow alumni, how to mentor students, how to be more involved um, in any way that you would want to, uh, please hit me up and you can contact us at SEO Alumni. So that's SEO Alumni at steadworth.edu. Um, and that's where you're gonna be sending the pictures so we can give all of them to Hannah at the end of this. Um, but even just if you have general questions, I know not everyone lives in Austin. So if you were moving and wanted to connect with someone, those are ways in which we can help you. Um, and if you follow us on our social media, that's also where we keep you engaged with the um, upcoming events. So be on the lookout for those. And uh, this session is being recorded, so it'll be available later. So you can always go back and reference if you missed anything or if you want to try this again and host it at your house or uh, whatever quarantine activity of your choosing. But um, Denise just added on the chat upcoming events. So we have a virtual club meeting. We have a topper trivia night. We have um, topper career talks, which is more on the professional development side. And then we're also celebrating this year the 200th anniversary of the Brothers of St. Joseph. So we have monthly webinars for y'all to join. So the next one is um, October 22nd, because we just had one earlier today. But um, yeah, we are so thankful for Hannah that is she's here. So I kind of want to give her a round of applause uh, oh at my this gosh. time. <laughs> Which is kind of hard because everyone's muted, but I see some emojis. I see, <laughs> I see it. I feel it. Thank you. You feel the energy through the screen. I do. Thank you guys <laughs> so much. This has been so much fun. We are so thankful for you for leading us and so excited. Um, so we're going to give everyone a minute. And then at that time, if you feel comfortable, if you could turn your camera on and then we'll kind of just like post kind of like what Hannah's doing right now. So you'll just post your painting next to you. We'll smile and then we'll take a picture. Um, so think of your first, like in class experience at the end, you have that pretty background. We don't have that today, but all of your backgrounds are great. Um, and this will be our group photo with our master class with Hannah. So you can pull a Vanna White and show it off. Or if you don't want to show your face, you can also just do it like this and cover yourself. So up to you, Ooh. challenge by choice. Lux, I love it. I love it. Very pretty. Oh my gosh, it looks so good, Katie. Wow. Oh, I like the spikes you added to it. That looks nice in the waves. Oh, good. Okay. So I see a couple people. Lisa, start. that looks great. Oh my God, I love what you did. Wow. So good. Look at those cool, I don't even know what those are. Trees. <laughs> okay, and I think Sam's gonna be taking our screenshot because um, I'm working from a PC, so I don't know how to do that, admittedly. So. If you are wanting to participate in this picture, and we would love oh to see your face, but if not, I love both of those girls. Um, you know, and Sam's gonna give us a hitch up, I guess, via chat when she's taking the picture. But you can just smile for in the meantime. Oh, that looks so good! Wait, all of them look so good. Okay, Angela, let's, I love it. I'll do a countdown of three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Sam will take it. So, three, two, one. 
and just in case we're gonna post for another one so <laughs> three two one perfect and i see on chat that sam got it so y'all thank you so much for being here and also I'm like for tearing up they all look so good yes we will send this to hannah right away um and if you could send us your individual pictures so we can share them all with hannah we would really appreciate that but also cheers to you for being here today and sharing yes, your night with you. us we appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you at upcoming alumni events so have a great night everyone and have a great dinner um if you miss dinner and thank you again to hannah thank you guys so much bye have a good night yeah, love you